everyone, Sean Frangella here for MotionTutorials.net with a new After Effects and Cinema 4D tutorial about how to create these cool wireframe 3D animations. This episode is brought to you by Artbeats Express. Create a free account at Artbeats Express stock media by subscription and receive complimentary broadcast quality resolution content files. No credit card payments or obligations are required. Click the link for more details. So here we have this spinning animation that I've brought into After Effects from Cinema 40 of this cool tire. And you can see it's a bit of a different take on working in 3D. We're just getting this wireframe outline. It's a pretty popular style and you can do some pretty cool stuff with it. So let's talk about how we could set this up with Cinema 4D and After Effects. So if I jump into Cinema 4D, here I have a 3D model of this tire and some details. And I haven't done anything special. There's nothing changed to do the wireframes yet. It's just a 3D model. And you can do this with any 3D geometry, really. That's kind of the idea. If I do a quick render, it would just be this gray. And what we want to do to create that wireframe look is we're going to get the atom array up here from our objects right here. And this is something that's in the full version of Cinema 40, so it's not in Cinema 40 Lite. I'm on R18 right now to be able to use this. So I'll drop in this atom array, or I could hold Alt while I have something highlighted like this wheel, and it's going to automatically put my objects in it. If I didn't do that, I could just get the atom array and then drop my objects into it with the down arrow. And what that's going to do is add cylinders and spheres to all of our geometry and vertexes. So if we turn these both down to two, you can start to see what's happening. And if we go to display lines and turn this off real quick, this is basically what we're trying to recreate. So if we just had lines, we're seeing our outlines, but we want to render that and have a bit more control over it to adjust the thickness. So I'll go back to display garage shading, turn back on our atom array. And if we turn our cylinder down, I'll put that at like 0.5 and our sphere at one centimeter. And take a look at this, you can kind of see what's going on. So everywhere there's a line, it creates the cylinder. Anywhere that there's a vertex where the points meet, it creates this sphere. Now, this is way too big and chunky. So what we want to do is take our cylinder down pretty far to like 0.1. And now we can see how thin those lines are, but we don't want to see these spheres. So we could put that at actually the same measurement. So we'll go to 0.1. And now we can start to see what we're looking for. But if we do our render, we just have our default gray. And that's not going to quite do what I want because even if we get pretty close, you can still see even without any lights or anything. And we're on our standard renderer right here without ambient occlusion, you still see a bit of the idea of lighting, even though it's only the ambient light. And we just want it to be a solid flat color. So what we want to do is we're going to make a new material down here with create new material open that up and all we got to do is turn off color and reflectance and I'm going to turn on luminance and I'm going to leave it at white. Now we could change the color, but I like to do that in after effects where we can have a quicker control over everything without having to burn the end of the render. So I'll just drag that material onto the whole atom array and then I'll press command R to get a quick idea of that and check that out. We have our wireframes and the reason I like to do it this way is because we could very quickly grab our atom array and make this, even smaller if we wanted, maybe 0 0.05 on both, and really quickly adjust how thick these lines are. So it gives you a bit more control than some other methods. Now, to add the color and that glow on it, I will want to bring this into After Effects. So I'll jump over into After Effects, and you can see here's this finished version. So we got some cool colors and glows on it. And I could either render that out from Cinema 4D, or I could actually just bring it straight in as a Cinema 4D file. So here's that Cinema 4D file. I'll go to open, can bring that in, and I can just drag that onto a new composition. And that's gonna give us our software render. And what's cool about this is that it's live updating in After Effects through Cinema 4D with this Cineware pipeline. So if I go to the Cineware effect and turn the render onto standard final, it's gonna quickly render that and it's knocking out an alpha channel. So I could even drop this into a scene with other After Effects objects. And with something as simple as this sort of thing where we're not adding a lot of reflections and glass or light or anything where it would render heavy, this is a pretty good use of Cineware because we can bring this in, we could add effects to it. It's gonna render pretty quickly. 
And then if we want to make adjustments or add any animation, we could just jump back into Cinema 4D and adjust it here. So maybe we want even thinner lines. We could go to 0.02 on both. And let's add a quick little spin. So I'll go to the whole atom array, go to coordinates, and I'll just rotate this parameter right here just to show what we're doing. So I'll click that dot to make a keyframe. I'll go ahead in time, put it on 359. So it's almost rotating completely around. Play this. We can see it's rotating, but it's easing in and out. So I can grab these keyframes in my little preview and just change that interpolation to linear from spline. And you get this attributes menu by again, just clicking and highlighting each keyframe. You can see it lights up. We can change interpolation from spline to linear and then display and it's going to remove those ease in and ease outs because Cinema 4D adds those by default, which is usually great, but for this, we might not want it. So then we could have this cool looping tire animation. I'll save that, jump back into After Effects, and it's going to update that. And there we have our animation. And if I bump down the quality temporarily and skip some frames, we can see how that's starting to go. So pretty cool stuff. Now, what's cool about this method with just adding this white texture in Cinema 40 is that we can use that as the alpha channel and really do the coloring and all the other little details in After Effects. So what we could do is go to Effects and grab a fill. I'm just gonna drag that effect onto the Cinema 40 layer. That's gonna fill the whole layer with the color, but since we're knocking out the alpha channel using Cineware, it only colors that object. So we could go to kind of like a cool blue or maybe green or something. Go with that, that looks pretty nice. And then we could get a glow, drag that on. It's gonna add that after our fill effect. Doesn't look like it does much now, but if we adjust our glow radius, intensity, and threshold, you can see that it's gonna do different effects. And again, this way of doing this in After Effects separately gives you a little more control because you can see updates to what you're doing a lot quicker and then even change the colors. Maybe now we want a red and then we could go back to our blue and very quickly and easily, we don't even gotta exit the effect, see these updates. So it's a really cool way to do wireframe animation of 3D objects using Cinema 4D and After Effects. And if you wanna check out more tutorials on Cinema 4D, After Effects and Cinema 4D Lite, be sure to check out motiontutorials.net where I have tons of tutorials on all of those subjects as well as categorized tutorials so you can find what you're looking for quickly if you're new to After Effects, if you're new to Cinema 4D, or if you want some more advanced tutorials, you can check out more complex ones that combine all this stuff. And be sure to check out the store at motiontutorials.net slash store where I got a bunch of cool products for After Effects, Cinema 4D, Cinema 4D Lite, and Element 3D, as well as some templates of movie title recreations and other stuff that I talk about in the tutorials. And if you want to hit me up on social media, you can check that out too. I'm on Facebook at facebook.com slash most tutorials. And I'm on Twitter. I'm at Sean Frangella. If you want to hit me up on social media, ask questions, make requests for tutorials, or interact that way. And be sure to check out more tutorials by clicking on any of those thumbnails where you can keep learning about Cinema 4D Lite, After Effects, and all sorts of stuff in VFX and 3D animation.